situation in Bengaluru has become unlivable or untenable. The latest reports say that techies are now fleeing the city and going back to their hometowns in order to work from there because there's simply no water in the high rises, in the big buildings, in the gated communities. Like I told you, uh, there is Bangalore only has access right now to half the water that it needs on a daily basis. The government is trying to ration out the water tankers and it is not a pleasant situation right now. Speaking to me at this point about what's going on and how much worse it's likely to get before it gets better is Dr. T.V. Ramchandra. He is a scientist with the Indian Institute of Science and particularly has been working on the, cons uh, the conservation of wetlands in India. He's been talking about the treatment of lakes and how the deterioration and the concretization of lakes in the city of Bengaluru has actually resulted in this problem. Now, nearly 10 years ago, he had predicted that Bengaluru would become unlivable because of the lack of water. And here we are today. Now, I want to introduce you to the guest I'm speaking to today. Dr. T.B. Ramchandra is a scientific officer at the Indian Institute of Science. And this conversation is really important because about a decade ago, Dr. TV had actually created ripples and ruffled feathers because he predicted that Bengaluru or Bangalore will become unlivable by 2020 because of the water situation. And at that point, and for the consecutive years after that, nobody paid attention. Now, I've had the good fortune of interacting with Dr. Ramchandra several times over the last decade when we talked about the lakes, the rivers, the lack of water, the Kaveri problem, and this simple lack of solutions in solving those problems and unfortunately, under similar circumstances, we're having to have this conversation again. Uh, I want to remind our audience that Dr. Ramchandra had predicted that Bangalore will go Cape, the Cape Town way, which was headed towards severe drought at one point, was shutting off water supply to homes. That is what has happened in Bangalore. There are massive gated communities that simply have no water to wash their hands or flush their loose or take a shower. Uh, Dr. T.B. Ramchandra, thank you so much for speaking with me. Um, I want to understand from you right now, at the beginning of the summer, 35 degrees in the sun in the middle of the day, how much worse is this likely to get in Bangalore? Well, if you look at the way we have done the, the city growth, it's an unplanned urbanization. You know, the city landscape had a green cover of 68% in 70s and less than 7% is the under buildings and the roads, etc. Today, if you look at 86% is a paved surface. When the landscape is uh, becomes a non-porous, you know, the infiltration of the water doesn't happen. And also the, the, the landscape loses its ability to moderate the climate. You know, that's why we have seen the increase in temperature to 32 to 34 degrees in the last one week. And it is likely to go, we might reach even 38, 39, or I am not surprised if it becomes 40. But more worrying thing is the groundwater. You know the you know the forty five percent of Bangalorean depends on the groundwater for the water, and in the Kaveri catchment, because of the deforestation, because of the changes in climate, we have seen the uh, you know the lower rainfall this year. One seventy five taluks in the state are drought prone, and Kaveri basin is experiencing a similar uh, experience of not having the water because of the deforestation. The Kaveri Basin is unable to retain the water. You know, my study shows wherever the forests are there of native species, the water is available in the stream or river for 12 months. When we convert that forest into uh, the, that, uh, or uh, remove the vegetation and deforestation happens, then the water is available only during the monsoon. Now, coming to the Bangalore case, you know, the only hope I see in the city of Bangalore is to rejuvenate the lake. We need to do the desilting of the lake because the silts have filled up the lake. There is no groundwater recharge is happening. Now, if you want to understand the success story, is the story of Saraki Lake. Saraki Lake was rejuvenated three years back. After rejuvenating, within a year, the groundwater table went up by 320 feet. And today, when majority of Bangalore is facing a water crisis, at Saraki Lake surrounding area, people have the water in the, their wells or the, the groundwater and there is enough water in the, the lake and also the, climb, uh, the the temperature in that area is at least two or three degree lower than the, uh, the other part of the city which tells us if you want to regain the glory of Bangalore we need to rejuvenate the, uh, the lakes in Bangalore on priority 
so that we can fill the rain water in the lake. You know, the city receives the rainfall of 700 to 850 millimeter, which amounts to about 15 TMC of water. That means, you know, the city requires 18 TMC of water, which means that 70% of the water required for Bangalorean is available in the form of rainwater. We need to make sure that people harvest the rainwater and if they do it, the individual houses will have three to four months additional water. The next best option is to rejuvenate the lake and retain the rainwater so that groundwater recharge happen, the moderating the climate will happen, the, we will have the pleasant city. Otherwise, we are going to pay the heavy price with the illogical developmental power. We are making the city unlivable. We, you know, our children cannot withstand this kind of a thing. So we may have to leave the city. That is what is going to happen. I hope that the city planners will take the message seriously and make sure the landscape is for us. We need to decongest the city today on priority. We cannot go on having all industries in Bangalore. There is a thing called carrying capacity for a particular region. We cannot cross the carrying capacity. Already we have crossed in Bangalore. Now our strategy should be to shift some of the industries, major installation from Bangalore to the other parts of the state so that they will have the the, 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 you know, they can enjoy the seeds of the, the developments, you know, the fruits of the development. You know, that's what Mahatma Gandhiji talked about it, Surajya, which so, means decentralized so, management of natural resources and harvesting of uh, the water so that whatever required by the people should be available at the local level. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Dr. Jagi, uh, these are, these are long-term solutions because obviously this has to be put into place and then it has to rain, which is not going to happen before mid-June at least. Between now and the 15th of June, we understand the government has seized water tankers, they have banned car washing, they have banned the use of Kaveri water for construction, and they're digging new bore wells. Is this an adequate solution in your opinion? Okay, these are all the reactionary approach, ad hoc decisions. You know, we are just doing that just to convince the people that there is a water. You know, the groundwater table, my study shows in some of the localities, when the lakes were there, groundwater table was 100 to 150 feet. After removing the lake, in four years or five years, the groundwater table went down to 600 feet. Today, people have gone down to 1,800 feet and there is no water. We may drill a hole, uh, this one bore wells, but where is the water? We have not allowed the landscape to the, allow the, uh, the percolation of water. You know, groundwater recharge is not happening in the city. That's where we are paying the price. Now, to get out of this problem, the immediate measure is let us treat the wastewater to the tertiary level and fill some of the lakes in the city, you know, so that, you, are, you know, nearby the wells, we can extract the water and use that and somehow manage the situation of Bangalore the, for this summer. But only the thing is, we all have short memory. Immediately after when it start raining, we forget about all these things. We do not come up with a sustainable solution. We do not think of tomorrow. We think of only today. That's where the mismanagement is happening. You know, we need to design the city, which is climate resilient. When it is climate resilient, you know, you will never face the crisis of water or the oxygen deficiency, etc. So let us do the planning of the city better. You know, the Bangalore is known for knowledge. Let us get the knowledge of the, the that is available in the city. Let us plan the city better. If whatever the decision has to be taken today, let us do it today so that tomorrow we have better Bangalore than struggling every summer like this. Okay. Uh, Dr. Jivi, you know, people will tell you that during the rains now in Bangalore, water comes into people's houses. There's water logging, there's flooding that happens. It does seem that. Or, you know, when it's raining, there's too much water. When it's not raining, there's not enough water. Is that fundamentally the problem? And also, since you said where the lakes are looked after, the people around those lakes have water, should it be the responsibility of the citizens now to look after their own lakes? No, no. See, that is one thing. The, the active, the citizens is a requirement for the success of any program. You know, Sarki Lake story, which I shared with you, the success is because of the local people. Local people formed the committee. They pressurized the government. They saw that lake rejuvenation happening. The desilting is happening. And today they are happy lot. So that same thing should have happened in the other part of the 
the city. Now, coming back to your question, you know, the lakes in Bangalore are interconnected. We have lost the interconnectivity of the lake because of the removal of the lake and the blocking of the drains with the encroachment. We need to re-establish the interconnectivity among the lake. If you are addressing the issue of floods, you know that water should flow in the system. Bangalore terrain is undulating. And if you allow the water to flow through the interconnected lake, you will have the treatment of water happening. At the same time, the water will be there in the lake. So my suggestion to the, the decision maker is first and foremost, let us re-establish the interconnectivity among the lakes. Let us remove all encroachment of the Raja Kalve as well as the lake bed without any mercy. This is where the judiciary also should help us in this regard. They should not take years or decade to give the decisions. It has to be a quick decision. Wherever the lake encroachment has happened, we should remove that encroachment ruthlessly without showing any humanitarian consideration because of the one or two families doing that encroachment. Hundreds of other families get uh, suffer in that region. So if we do that and then if we do the desilting of the lake, naturally we will have the, the water in the lake, the water moves in the lake, there won't be a flood, the tomorrow there won't be a drought situation. Otherwise, irony is, Yesterday flood, today is the water scarce situation. We should not allow that to happen, which only highlights the poor planning in the city. Okay. But VDV, is it also fundamentally unplanned construction and corruption in that sector that has led to this problem? Well, I agree with you. The city landscape has witnessed a 1055% increase in the concrete area. 88% loss in the vegetation and 79% loss of the water body. You know, as per the norm, 33% should have been the green cover in the region. We have violated the town planning norm. You know, every ward should have had a 15% open spaces, which include the green and uh, spaces as well as the lake. The day, you know, in 1990, we handed over the city to the, the builder mafia. That is where we lost the city, which was livable. Even today, if you look at the wards like uh, Jainagar and Basankode, which was well planned, continues to be the other thing. Whereas the outskirts of the city shows the irony of the, the, the mafia that is uh, that has played their role in killing the city. We need to regain the city. We need to do the planning properly. That is where they, we need to have a coordinated governance. You know, there are too many parastate agencies, lack of coordination. This is, uh, you know, taken advantage of this fragmented governance is the builders and water mafia. That's where Bangaloreans are paying the heavy price for the poor governance in the region. And so fundamentally, Doc, there is no solution until June other than to just manage with whatever water is left. No, there is a solution. I have told you, we claim... And our BWSSB keeps informing the National Green Tribunal they have the better treatment facility. Now let us put them on test. Let them treat and give the treated water, fill the treated water in the lake so that surrounding the groundwater resources will improve. And we can extract the groundwater resources supply to the, the local resident. We need to do that. You know, that is what is the requirement. That And the day when we make uh, the... The accountable, the bureaucracy will have a better governance in the city. If we allow them to mismanage, we will suffer. As a citizen, we will suffer. We cannot allow that. Let us make the bureaucrats accountable. If they are not to go providing that tertiary treated water as they have assured earlier, let us make them accountable so that they, you know, the tomorrow would be better for us. Look, uh, you've been dealing with and working on the water problem in Bangalore for more than a decade now. Has anyone in government gotten in touch with you in the last one month for possible solutions to take your advice? Well, no, no, not yet. Not yet. So I don't think they will do that because they always come up with the statements which won't solve the problem of the people, only the lip service. The people continue to struggle. But local residents have met me. Some of the people have raised their concern. They asked me how to change the scenario. Okay. See, I'm not a God man to say that I will give a water, but only the, the solution is the scientific solution that has to happen in the system. Okay. We need to think of water security in the city through the proper planning of the region. What will happen if we stop all the, the building activities, all the, uh, the industries coming to the city for the next two years? Let us just freeze it. 
and plan the city properly and ask some of the major installation to move out of the city to the other uh, the district you know wherever they where, by doing that you know the youth from that district they work in the industry during the you know monday to friday during the weekend they do the farming work so that our agriculture also will prosper and also our in uh, the, the industry the youth also get the job that is the kind of the thing that is called cluster based development of power you know that's again proposed by mahatma gandhi ji cluster based development depending on the resource available we should have had a industry you know if you want to see this model working if you go to tanjavur kumbakonam and tiruvallur that triangular junction you will see the industries are in the, the town people from the surrounding area they travel to the town they go back to the villages you know there is no densification in the town at the same time the villagers are working in the industry at the and they also do the farming in the weekend that model should be replicated throughout the country which means we need to improve the infrastructure in all parts of the state and shift some of the major uh, industries from the, the 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 bangalore to the other state let us make the entire state prosperous why only bangalore the bangalore is sinking let us regain the glory of bangalore by proper governance and uh, dr ramchandra obviously now we've heard rumblings from tamil nadu as well that the water access to the kaveri is being cut off because bangalore is not releasing the water do you believe that at this point we should also find ways to not be so dependent on kaveri water which is 100 kilometers away and not always reliable see if we can all of us join hands tamil nadu karnataka kerala join hand and manage the kaveri watershed you know we will have enough water when there are enough water there won't be any conflict you know this is what i have been telling the the governments of tamil nadu and karnataka you know people push their agenda through the mekedattu project in the process they are submerging an area of 5000 hectare which is providing a hydrological services of storing 100 100 tmc of water i question the government removing 5000 uh, hectares of forest which is doing a marvelous job of uh, the hydrological service of storing 100 tmc what is the purpose of removing the forest and storing 65 tmc of water in the the concrete dams see this is a thing the government should understand and also the forest ecosystem services what it is providing you see that 5000 hectare every hectare on an average about 1 million rupees per hectare per year is the service provided by the forest 5000 into 1 billion look at the kind of the this one you know you have about 50 billion rupees worth of the uh, the forest services provided by the forest since they don't go to the court there are no one de- defending the forest that's why they are under the threat we need to bring this kind of anomalies in the system into the 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 decision makers mind you know we need to think about a better gdp you know gross domestic product which does not account the degradation cost let us make the gdp green gdp by incorporating the whatever the losses we incur think in terms of the ecological de- uh, deterioration in our gdp then we will have a true gdp that is the model we should have see we have a erroneous metric of gdp and we claim that we are going up but uh, in the process we are uh, losing the sustainability of the resources let us not do this mistake again and again let us now the things have evolved united nation has developed the protocol to have the green gdp let us implement that in our country on priority this is at a much broader broader level macro level we have to take the decision to develop the green gdp and follow the green gdp so that you know no mafia will take a control of any region we all will have clean air and water that's what our children requires All right, Dr. T. V. Ramchandra, thank you so much for giving me your time. I know that you're a very busy man. I appreciate uh, all of the solutions. We do hope that people in charge of the city of Bangalore, Bengaluru, and the state of Karnataka will pay closer attention to the minds who have been working on these problems now for decades, with whom the solutions are already available. Thank you so much for speaking okay. to us.